Have you ever seen this? If you just said yes to that question, this is the video for you. This video will assist you in your studies of Herb Zettel's Video Basics 4. This video would teach you in depth about aesthetics, mic classification, modulation, and helping you to decide whether or not to use a narrator. So let's jump right in. We'll begin with proper mod. Hey, whoa! Hey, yeah, you, turn that down! Ah. Ah, much, much better. As you have heard, overmodulation is not a good thing. It causes the audio to become very distorted. It makes everything sound unprofessional and will definitely lower your grade on a video project. Here's how to properly modulate your DVC-60. On the LCD screen, there are, if you connected the cables correctly, white bars with variable length. This is your audio level. If the bars go all the way into the red, like this, you are overmodulated. To remedy this, find the white knobs to the right of the LCD screen and simply use your finger to change the levels of the audio. Once the audio level gets slightly into the red, you will have perfect, high quality, correctly modulated audio. Another decision that needs to be made when making a video project is whether to use a narrator or not to use a narrator. Each have their positives and negatives, but what it comes down to is basically a matter of preference. The narrator is more personal because you actually see the person talking to you. The narrator is informative yet intimate in the sense that the tone of the narrator is conversational. Another approach to use is no narrator and using purely voiceover. Purely voiceover is usually affiliated with documentaries where the narrator is delivering facts and is less personal. Now, this is a matter of preference, and you have to decide for yourself, your audience, and the particular situation whether or not to use a narrator. Let's take a look now at audio aesthetics. This is extremely important to any audio video production. It sets up many feelings, emotions, etc. about the shot. Look at these, and you will see why. This is an example of context. You can tell that this person is in school and is late for a class. You can tell this by the audio. The video can't make you feel that he is late for a class. Let's see two examples of figure ground. In this scene, you are attempting to get audio of the two boys in the front rows of chairs. Um, yeah, the computer. No, let's right. try it out. All right, and what's your keyword? See if I can describe it. You want to talk to yourself, Angela? I'll just try to make it more fluent than like. Hi, welcome to the Home Shopping. Our first model is this. Yeah, it, but it's going to be very. Or how about this? So what do you think my about my changes to that script? They're looking good, but what if we added in another scene right here? Maybe. Maybe. Number two is obviously better than number one. There is way too much background noise in the first, which detracts a ton from what you are actually trying to record. Figure ground is making the object in action louder than the background to make them stick out since they are the subject. Moving right along, perspective is another form of audio aesthetics. Watch these two videos. So, how did you do on that test yesterday? Well, not so well. Uh, so, how did you do on that test yesterday? Well, not so well. Uh, in these last examples, the second was actually incorrect. The big idea with perspective is that close objects are louder than distant objects. In the last example, the extreme long shot was as loud as the first which was a close-up. So, the main thing to remember is distance soft, close loud. The next category of aesthetics is continuity. In this example, the students are obviously in a different location than previously. You can tell this solely because of the audio. The audio goes from a silent background to a loud booming background. So, what are you doing tomorrow? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll figure it out after. Lastly, an obvious one, energy. In this scene, the video goes along with the audio, showing a high level of energy. Yeah. 
Yes! Yes! Enough of that. One of the most important factors in audio is actually getting high quality audio to work with in post production. How is this done? While shooting, you absolutely must consider proper mic placement and the pickup patterns of microphones. To understand which mic is appropriate for a given scene, you must first know the pickup patterns of the various microphones. These are classified into four categories unidirectional, omnidirectional, cardioid, and hypercardioid. With just a small amount of Latin knowledge, you can easily understand all of these terms. In Latin, uni means one, and omni means multiple. Cardio means heart. Now put uni and omni with directional, and you get unidirectional, which obviously means one direction, and omnidirectional, which obviously means many directions. Cardioid refers to the shape of the pickup pattern of a microphone. Specifically, it means that the microphone picks up sound in a heart-like shape. Add hyper to that, hypercardioid, and you will have just that, a hypercardioid with a much better range of sound pickup than the regular cardioid. Let's look at mic placement and the usage of various microphones. First, one of the most common microphones used in videos, which you will most likely use, are lavalier mics. These are small unidirectional mics that are very rugged and clip on to the shirt of a person whose audio you want. Watch practically every new show or other show with just dialogue and you will almost definitely see one of these. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. Another very common type of microphone is the hand microphone. Field reporters frequently use hand microphones for their durability as do singers on tour because they are often banged around in transit from one destination to another. Along with being durable, singers very often use them on stage. They come in many directions. The last type of mic is the boom or shotgun mic. Whoa. Now that is a boom mic. And the primary goal of the mic is to have no mic visible in the shot. These are very effective for relatively long range shots where audio is needed. Technically, these are hypercardioid so that they can reach the distance needed to receive high quality audio at high distances. Thank you for watching. Now you can fully comprehend Chapter 8 of Video Basics 4, which will ensure your success in the audio field of any future video you produce.